Today I'm going to show you how to do a couple simple repairs. Um, occasionally people will break a paddle shaft. Uh, we recommend replacing the whole shaft uh, when it breaks in the middle like this. But it can be repaired. Um, we can send you replacement tubes. Um, this is the, the piece that will fit inside this shaft. Um, basically we're going to basically cut out two inches of the bottom end shaft and a couple inches off the top to get rid of the damaged area. And we're going to splice this in. And then we're going to use this new composite patch um, made by Apple Tech. I'm going to show you how this patch works. We're going to do an external patch as well because when it breaks in the middle sometimes you need some external reinforcement so you're not relying 100% on a smaller diameter um, carbon ferrule. And with this composite patch kit I'm going to show you how to repair a crack. You can see this paddle got smashed or crushed somehow and you can see there's a big crack right in the middle but that's salvageable. We're going to put a patch, a diamond shaped patch right over that. So the first thing we got to do is line up the two halves and we're going to basically cut out um, a small section to get rid of the damage there. I'm just going to mark it with a couple pieces of tape. So you line up your, the piece that you're going to splice, splice in and you're going to, so that when you're done, your paddle is actually the same length as it originally was, okay? So you can see this will cut away any bit of damaged um, carbon shaft. So make a couple of quick cuts. So I'm going to use a chop saw. You can also just carefully cut it with a hacksaw, but we're going to cut it right on that line. You can see that's the piece that was, was damaged. Take that away. And we'll cut that one. Make sure you get the carbon dust out of there. Next thing you're going to want to do is uh, make sure you rough up all the mating parts. So we take some sandpaper. You can use 80 grit or 100 grit. 120 even works. So you want to rough that up so you get a nice good bond. Um, you want to sand inside of this also. On both ends. Okay. Then this one you can see I've already sanded one end. We're going to sand the other end as well. That'll help it stick. Okay. Now, while we've got the sandpaper out, my hands are dirty. Uh, you can see I marked off where I'm going to put a diamond patch in here. So you always want to rough this up. Uh, whenever you're bonding or gluing or making a repair, you want to sand the, uh, the surface so you get a good bond. Okay. This is a uh, rag that's got a little bit of um, denatured alcohol in it. I'll just wipe that clean. This is a quick setting five minute epoxy that we're going to use just for the internal repair. And you can see since I've got a pretty substantial amount to do, I'm going to do about that much five minute epoxy. Uh, this is the same epoxy we use for putting our uh, our handles on. I just use my finger to stir it because I'm going to need to get my fingers dirty in a second here anyway to install it. Okay. So you mix that up really good. Okay, I'm going to put a, as far as I can reach into the tube. Smear it all around. See, I'm coating the inside real nice. And the inside there. And do both halves. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is coat the inside of this piece. Okay. From both ends. Then I'm going to slide my ferrule in there so that I'm halfway, okay? Now I'm going to coat the end of that. Okay. Now you've got all your mating surfaces nice and wet. You're going to put that in there like so. And you notice how I'm holding it so it doesn't, you know, that that stays centered. You want to, an engineering book will tell you you need two times the diameter of your, um, 
So if the inside shaft diameter is an inch, you, you need at least a couple inches of um, overlap. Now I gotta be careful when I slide this one on that I don't push the tube in any farther. You see how it's not moving? Because I'm using my thumb to hold it. Okay, now what you do is you lay it on a long table like this. Make sure you've got everything lined up carefully. And there's a little bit of gap there, so we're gonna put something across the bottom to hold it nice and straight. You can just take a couple boards like this and stack them up just to get your, your parts level, okay? Like so, and I'm gonna take some masking tape. You're gonna see what we're gonna do with the composite patches. We're gonna repair this from externally as well. I'll even do one around the outside of the joint like so to keep that lined up. This will set up in a quick five or ten minutes, so see that? Yeah, get everything nice and lined up. Okay. You'll see this comes in a nice handy little uh, package. Composite patch. There's some instructions here. And this is uh, some nice 2x2 two two tool carbon which will match my paddle lamp. And you can see it's already got the hardener and the epoxy um, already dispensed in a 50-50 ratio, meaning an adequate amount to saturate the whole piece of carbon at one time. And you've got the same amount by weight of hardener, which is the amber resin, as the, um, the clear one, okay? So, again, I go back and I put my gloves on, all right? And the first thing I do is mix the two together. So you take the divider off that's in between the two, okay? There's a little stick that comes out from in between. This is pretty slick stuff. What you do is you just mix these together. And you can see the reason they're two different colors is so that you can tell when you've mixed them thoroughly together. So you just sort of mix those back and forth. And flip this over this way. Put that out of the way. All right, once you've got it all mixed nice and thoroughly, then you want to take this other divider off, okay? Get that out of the way. Yeah. Now, you see that? We're going to pull the epoxy down into the fabric. Okay. Do it from both sides. The nice thing about this stuff is it's nice and you don't have to smell the epoxy. You can see how all of it traveled down to this end now, see? All right. You can even roll it back up. Okay. Now, we're ready to cut out the patches that we need. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut two patches here. One that fills the diamond and one slightly smaller. Whenever I do a patch, uh, I look at the structure and I decide if it's going to need one layer or two. This one's pretty substantial. Sometimes if it's a really big break, you can even go three, three plies. What we're going to do is, this is pretty cool, you can just cut this out, okay. I'm going to cut one that's uh, basically four inches. You'll see that'll fill you the, the void there. I like to trim that little tracer thread off too, that little gold one that's there. But you can see that's going to be my bigger patch. My hands are shaky today. <laughs> okay. Then that'll be the smaller one. Make that a square one as well. You see how the carbon fiber has a grain to it? I'm going to match the grain of the paddle actually so it's going to look nice. Now what you do, see how I cut that with inside the plastic? You peel one layer of the plastic back, okay? And you see the grain? We're gonna put that over the patch right there. I just like putting on a sticker, actually. This is pretty cool stuff. Okay, then you just peel that plastic back off. 
a little hard to grab the end of the plastic when you got the gloves on, but there you go. Okay, now we got one on. And then we're going to take the other one, the bigger one. We're going to peel back one layer of plastic, like so. Okay. And this is nice. See, the plastic keeps everything from getting all un you know, unraveled. But you see how that's going to go in there? I'm going to flip it over. And that patch goes perfectly in the middle there where I've sanded it. When it dries, of course, we're going to sand it again. Okay, but I'm going to push all the air out while I've got the plastic on it. Okay. Sometimes you can take a rubber squeegee like this yeah. one. You can actually use that to get any excess air out. You can actually leave the plastic on, which is I think what I'm going to do, and peel the plastic away once it cures, okay? That's going to leave it a nice smooth surface, okay? If you have any strands that bleed out like that, you can just peel those away. It's pretty simple. Okay, now let's do the shaft while we've got this stuff going. May as well use all the material. This piece is going to be enough to go around the shaft one time. Okay. So again, I'm going to cut one smaller one. Okay. And I'm going to cut a bigger one. It's going to go over that one. This one I'm going to cut to where it goes around two times. Let's see. I'm done here. Throw these little scrap pieces away. You see how I cut that tracer thread off? I don't think you want that on there. Alright. Well, I think that's all we're going to need. Now, position this like so. Actually, let's do it this way. Put a block here. Okay, get this thing up off the table for us. Now, we're going to pull. So I got to cut this away too. That was the end of the uh, plastic envelope. I'm going to pull one off here. And we're going to apply it over. Oh, that just happened to be the one where my label was. Okay. And now, I'm going to peel the plastic away on this side as well. Notice how there's some grain to the shaft. I want to match it if I can, see? The fiber is going this direction on the shaft. It's going this direction on my patch kit. So I'll lay that on so. Get all the air out. And then I grab the end of this. A little tricky to get it started, but so I'm gonna pull the plastic away. That line back up straight. Okay. And carefully loop it around a couple of times. There we go. You can see that's gone around three times, so it's going to be plenty strong. Okay. And then I take my gloves off. You see, I got a slick little way of um, holding that down nice and tight. I actually just use electrical tape. I'll start from one end. I put the tape side down, okay? I put it between my legs and as I spin it up towards my joint, I actually flip it over so that the uh, sticky side is now out. And then what you do is you just sort of spin this. The electrical tape's nice and stretchy. And you just, um, when this dries, I'll just pull the tape back off, but this basically holds everything down nice and tight and gets all the air out. The actual real good tape you can use is the same tape that's used when we, these are manufactured and it's more of a high temperature um, curing tape that when it, you heat it actually shrinks and it'll put a lot of pressure on your laminate. But if you don't have a vacuum pump or something like this, it's just a simple way to do it. I used to do this in my garage years ago before I knew how to vacuum bag and do all that fancy stuff. I'll let that cure overnight. Come back tomorrow, take the tape off, sand it smooth. Now you've got an internal tube and then an external wrap too. We had one layer go around the whole lap and then that second layer down is a little bigger and goes around probably 
two and a half, if not three times. And then that's all that's left. That, was, that composite patch was big enough to repair a blade and a uh, shaft all at one time. So we'll come back tomorrow and show you how to finish it out. Okay, so we're back today after doing our little composite patch uh, repair. This paddle was the one that was cracked. If you remember, I left the plastic on here, so we'll peel that off. See, I made a nice little, basically, mold for that. Um, now what we want to do is smooth out these edges a little bit. This is some 80 grit. We'll just sort of smooth out the transition a little bit. Then uh, this is some 120, slightly finer sandpaper. All right, and then uh, at this point I can take the, uh, the masking tape off. I'm done with that. Masking tape off, and then if you want to do a little, make your repair a little nicer, here's a rag. You can always take some, uh, this is 320 grit, actually, this is 600 grit wet sandpaper. And you can just sand your carbon out. It just depends on how fancy you want to make your patch look. But with a little practice with this stuff, you can get it pretty smooth. And you can sand out all your little imperfections if you want. It just depends on how particular you are about the cosmetics when you're done. And you can see that's uh, when that dries, the water dries, it's going to be a little dull. And we actually have a little spray uh, lacquer that we can spray on there. But I could get that tape off and everything. But hey, you get the right idea there. A little bit more sanding and we make it look brand new. Then let's take a look at what we did on the shaft. Uh, if you recall, we spliced in a piece and I uh, started to peel the tape back. But I realized we wanted to get this on the camera. You can see this left actually some pretty good ridges uh, because this tape is a little flexible. You can use packing tape. We actually. Since this repair, I've gone to packing tape, which we found is a little bit better and get a little smoother finish. But same process here, you can take some 80 grit and just blend out these grooves a little bit. You might want to leave some of that texture there, actually. You might, if it's right where your hand goes, you might actually prefer it. But you can take some 80 grit and blend this in. I got some extra resin that bled out there. We'll have to grind off. I'll show you how to do that. And then again, some, uh, some 120 here. And then we're going to take the wet sandpaper when we're all done and do a final sanding. But uh, you can see I got a little bit of sanding to do on there. If I was to do that again, I'd definitely use some stiffer tape to, uh, to do that. But you're going to see this is going to be a really strong repair. fixed internally and externally.